Russell James is just taking his checks out here. Russell, that's all I need. I have a call about Russell. I think I might decide to set up this because he's in a red car. Tom Bundy said, I'm on his own. He's coming. You know what? Joe, he hasn't left his office yet. All right. Okay? What do you want to do with your Hi, fellas. Thank you for coming. You know what? Thanks. All right. You know how I hate the cameras. I know it. <laughs> Brian, these cameras. You know how I hate cameras. I'll take. I'll take a hundred copies. Why are you coming?
Thank you very much, Mike. I love how the Republicans, did you see Connors and Burris, they hugged each other and everything? I love that. The Democrats don't even talk to each other. <laughs> you know the amazing thing about it? 90% of the people here are Democrats. It's amazing. <laughs> but uh, we, while we're, just while we're waiting to eat, we're, we're waiting to have our meal, I just want to say a few things. Um, we, have a, we have a lot of mayors here. You mentioned Joe Vidala, Bill McDonough, Jimmy Connors. We have ex, uh, Mayor McGrory. We have Dave Winslow and James McNulty, who served the city of Scranton. And uh, so we're, we're, really good at, we're really happy here tonight that all these people are here. We all, we, all know, let, we all know one thing, all of the cities still suck. It doesn't matter who the mayor is. <laughs> Let's face it. I mean, they, they don't do the job, but yet they, but they're still the mayor, you have to show them respect. And Kevin O'Shea told me to say that, I swear to him. <laughs> Kevin, did you tell me to say that? Yeah. I, I love the way the city's run, though. I'm a, I'm a Democrat. I, I own a building in Scranton. I'm a Democrat. Where does Santorum move into my building? Where does Joe O'Shea work, who's the biggest Democrat in the whole county, for Santorum? I have to laugh at that. I get a kick out of it. The Republicans don't have a chance when you think about it. But, Look at Bill Scranton there nodding his head. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to see everybody here. I saw, uh, you know, I said, Lord, just listen to some of the people. You know, like you have an Irish mayor and all the people who dished out money, like you have Joe Barati, Sammy Tomino, Rocco Valvano, Leo Brignetti. Now think about that. Listen to their last names. They're the ones who dished out thousands of dollars to get an Irish guy elected mayor. <laughs> But Bill McDonough is here, he's the mayor of Music, and he wants to present the key to the city of Music. Wow, big deal. <laughs> I'm only kidding. You know, he wants to present the key to the city of Music to uh, Mayor James Kai. I don't know why. Like, who the hell wants the key to the city of Music? He's here, the poor guy, he even wore a tuxedo. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I was only kidding. But uh, he's here to present the key to the city of music to Mayor James Connors. So, fake it and clap. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, clergy, honor guest, uh, Mr. Toastmaster, and I hope you pass through music. <laughs> you know, some time ago, uh, I had the great pleasure of being close friends with Mr. Connors mayor's father, and the late Mrs. Connors, Lulu as we call her, and the mayor knows, as a matter of fact, when he introduces me to some of his family, he says, this is my mother's friend. First, I'm not mayor or Bill, it's my mother's friend. And she was a great woman, and when I used to go down to, we had a place in Duryea that was, well, they served a little after midnight. <laughs> and. Everybody sang was an organ player, and the place name was Noble, Ellie Noble, was the organist. And Lulu was a great singer, great entertainer. And every time I come through that door, she sang a song, which I want the mayor just him and I to sing one or two lines of it. And then she sang more songs, and more songs for me. So if I had a date, it was a great impression and a great place to go. But uh, one time, the mayor and I went to a Halloween party down there. We dressed in a horse's costume. And <laughs> we won the contest. But you had to win the talent contest to get this special award. And tonight, I'd like to present, I got my trophy, by the way, for the part I played in the horse. 
And tonight I'm here to deliver the other part of the trophy that the mayor played as part of the horse. And from Elder Nolan's Cafe, on amateur night, singing contest, a special award. Here's the other half of the horse. <laughs> That song his mother always sang. Manuka all the way. M I N O O K A Manuka all the way. That's the way you spell it. Here's the way you spell it. Manuka! <laughs> I could go on and on with stories uh, of the Connors family and myself in particular, Mr. Connors, Mrs. Connors, the other members of his family. Bobo in particular, and the mayor, <laughs> the mayor himself, and we had some great times as friends, and now politically we have representation, him in the city of Scranton, me in the borough of Music, and many times Jim gets down there and draws a line, he says, this is your side, this is my side, <laughs> and we divide these things up, especially with the, the mountain up there, the Nat West coming in, and the other companies, Prudential, Pennies, the whole gang of them. We get along very well, and that's how mayors should get along and public officials in every community. In other, in other words, you have to make things happen. The only way you make it happen is you all get together and unify. And that's the only way progress is made. And I hope it continues. I know it will. As long as he is mayor of the city of Scranton, and I'm mayor of the borough of Music. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to present a key to the borough of Music to James P. Connors, March 23rd, 1966. Thank you. I just want to say that uh, Mayor, Mayor McDonough, we have split things up back there in Manuka, and uh, Mayor gets McDonald's and the Kmart, and I get Glen Mara and Nat West. Uh, uh, he stole Manuka Subaru away, or Subaru away, but we're getting it back. God bless Billy McDonough. My mother always told me that Bill McDonough was like a son to her, and he really is, and we claim him in Manuka. God bless you, Mayor McDonough. All right. That's it before we have our dinner, and then after that we could uh, tell a few jokes. We already heard the principal speaker. McDonough said to me, all I want to do is present the key to the city. He made a 15-minute speech with this tuxedo. But we're good. that's it until we have our dinner. Enjoy your dinner, and then we'll, we'll talk a little more. Thank you. Uh, Mayor McGordy's out of town. Somebody has to drive him back to Wilkes-Barre. <laughs> By the way, I want to say one thing about Mayor McGordy. Even though I saw him on, uh, I saw McGordy on, on the McNulty show, and I, that the first, the, I saw him on the McNulty show one day, and he had McGordy. The truth is, the truth is, I never heard of the guy before he was on McNulty. That's the truth. Did you ever hear of him, Mayor Connors? No, you never heard of him either. What's he doing up here? But uh, I'm only kidding, Mayor. But McNulty made him famous. He went to McNulty show. Your famous instrument. It's amazing. How about putting John Menor on there so somebody will know who he is? There's, uh, Does anybody, speaking of John Menorah, did anybody see Johnny V. Menorah here? Or Johnny V. Pieski? Anybody see him? Whatever happened to Johnny V. Pieski? Oh, he's in the kitchen, the mayor said. You know what's funny about Johnny V. Pieski? He sent letters to everybody. Everybody I know in Lackawanna County got a letter from Johnny V. Pieski. Like, if your husband died, he'd send it to the wife. Congratulations on the death of your husband. He, he, was, he was unbelievable. I, I, and, 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 but John Menor always said, right along, he said, my brother's going to win. Tell the truth. Now, one person in this room, Tom Menor, is going to win. They said, oh, you did? That's not what you told me. Uh, but, uh... You know, we have, a, we have a program we're going to try to get started, so first I'm going to call up, like, uh, I'll call up the people who weren't that important. So, Joe, Joe Vandella, the mayor of Carbondale, you can come up here, and I'm only kidding, Mayor, you can come up here. Alright, he's going to say a few words on behalf of Mayor Carbondale. 
Well, I, I know that a lot of people don't think of Carbondale as a city and because, uh, you know, we're kind of in part of the outer loop around, you know, big Scrant. Uh, someday I hope that we're, that through a lot of hard work, we could be, you know, we could have some of the great things and be just like Scrant, you know, like distress status. And, <laughs> I'm working hard at it now. The blizzard, the blizzard did a good job on it. Well, uh, I really, uh, I always did admire Jimmy because uh, I liked the way that he uh, he made putting people where they belong, as far as in control of of his uh, departments and his activities. He put he he made putting the right person in the right place an art. Thank God that he did, because you just think if he was in charge. <laughs> I mean, this is all from the cuff here, all right? So it's fine. I just know what he looks like from up in Carbondale, that's all. Well, oh, really. <laughs> Not really, uh, especially since I might get pulled over for speeding or something down here in Scranton. Really, Jimmy, I really like it. I think the world of you. Good luck. Thank you, Mayor. I have to admit, Mayor, that was good. For off the cuff, I have to admit it, it was good. And, uh... Back next year. The one that, the one that, you know, something, somebody said he won't be back next year. He will be. The one we didn't invite back was uh, that insurance guy, Murray. What's his name? Uh, no, Brian Murray. That's it. We didn't invite him back. We put Bill Strand in his place. It, it's funny because uh, Murray wasn't that good. Is he here? Right huh? Oh, good. He's out of town. No, but. If he bought a table of tickets, but I, we're glad he's not here. No, last year he wasn't, you know, he got up here and he wasn't funny, remember? Just, so we asked Scranton to take his place. I didn't hear Scranton yet, I don't know if he's any good. But I, but I do know one thing about Bill Scranton, I have to say this. I hang around with the guy a lot, I see him a lot, I see him almost every day. And the truth is, you know, Scranton and I came from the same background. Now so think about it. Think about it now. He was, Strand was raised at Marworth and I was raised in Jessup. Uh, no, the truth, Strand, Strand went to Yale and I went to Marworth. And he, he ran for governor of Pennsylvania. I ran for commander of the VFW in Jessup. <laughs> but, you know what, Bill? What the hell's the difference? We both lost. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I just want to... I, I I, Jack Fitzpatrick asked you to get up and say a few words. So, Jack, I, you know, it's your turn. And good luck. And God bless you. <laughs> Quite an introduction, I'll tell you. He took my first good joke, so I'm gonna have to make a change there. Actually, I'm pinch hitting tonight. There was a very good speaker that couldn't make it, Gator Cauley, and we hope everything is well with him. Uh, so I'm a little nervous last night, and um, when I got the call, so I had to pinch hit. And I'll tell you something, our kids have been sick all week, and last night, about three in the morning, I woke up nervous, sweat, anxiety ridden. My wife said, geez, you're getting the flu, you won't be able to do the roast. I said, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bomb just like Brian Murray. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't his fault because Brian had terrific notes. He had them all taken down, great jokes. But what happened was they were put in the evidence room at the city hall library. They gave to George Murphy and they just went and they went so far. Tom McGrady, I'm glad Tom came up here today. You know, we have James, James Patrick Matters. I don't even know. Thomas Daniel McGrady. And Thomas, what's your middle name? Joseph. Thomas Joseph Munley. Beavis Bunhead and Batapuco. I, I saw my wife just walked in, and she's a speech therapist, so we're going to give her the card. 
anything we could do for private duty. That, that's called billable hours. Uh, and I think the mayor can work on that too. Um, that's story, I, I, I saw Tom got a little press riding around, you know, with the sirens and stuff like that. Don't worry about that. Our mayor lives on bad press up here. <laughs> But you know, when you look at Tom McBurney and Jimmy Connors, geez, he makes Jimmy look like a statesman, this guy. You got it. Four more years. I, I want to relate a little story we had here. Uh, when uh, Jimmy's brother, Pat, told us that Jimmy was going to run for mayor. One of the first functions we went to was the Friendly Sun dinner. And, you know, I, I thought, you know, he's going to run for mayor. There's a lot of Democrats running, but, you know, he's a popular guy. What the hell? And Patty tells me, you know, he's going to be a Republican. Oh, I didn't know any Republicans except the Jones family. Right? That's the only thing I knew at the time. So we went up there, and there was a guy from Dunmore who was very, you know, I won't mention his name, from the Hollywood section. He has a Casey job for about 30 years now. And he's sitting at the table. Joe Murray is with us, Patty Connors, and uh, Jimmy, before anyone knew who Jimmy was. And the waitress came around getting us beer. Jimmy said, oh, I don't drink beer. I'm, I'm not a drinker. This guy's rolling his eyes. Look at him. The dinner comes over. It's prime rib. I mean, blood red. Jimmy goes, oh, I don't eat meat. Oh, yeah, this guy's rolling his eyes like that. And um, so I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be a nightmare. Then he says that his wife happens to be Jewish, and they celebrate holidays together. Finally, the guy says, wait a minute. You're Irish, you're from Manuka, you're a Republican, you don't eat meat, you don't drink, and you're running for mayor of Scranton? He said, good luck. He said, you have as much chance of being the mayor of Scranton as the president of the IRA does to speak at the friendly side. <laughs> well, lo and behold, seven years later, here we are, and now uh, we're looking up, hopefully, for term number three. That's good. City's an economic ruin. <laughs> you know, Jerry Adams, speaking of Sinn Féin, Jerry Adams, the president of uh, Sinn Féin, spoke at Ginetti's last week. It's, it's good. It was a nice friendly son's dinner in Dixon City at Ginetti's. That was good, too. I'm sure you love that. And they made him stay in Clark Summit, Bill's town. Up there. All Protestants. All load of the Protestants over there. A lot of people were telling Jimmy, you better be careful because I'll tell you, Jerry Adams is a political figure. At any given moment, there could be an assassination attempt. And I think Jerry Adams was very, very worried. But what he did was he got in town early, read a couple back issues of the Scranton Times, especially the editorials. He wouldn't stand next to Jimmy Connors because he thought he'd get assassinated. Jimmy, I mean, if he ever loses, someone beats him for mayor. Uh, maybe Johnny Superstar. I know he's running. <laughs> it's, it's an even quest right now. Oh, 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 oh. We could be roasting him next year. <laughs> if he didn't, he could always go. I know he recorded that tape with the poets, and it's a very good tape. You know, the poets are terrific. I talked to some of the guys in the poets, and they said, "Yeah, well, the poets." Jimmy, Jimmy tells us they're going to take us to the new level. Well, the name of the new CD is the Dead Poets Society. <laughs> Um, one of the things that um, I really have a problem with the mayor with, and he knows this, we've spoken many times about it, is the patronage. And Tom McGrory, you gave your brother the biggest job in Wilkesbury. Right? <laughs> you could rent the book. No <laughs> one has given as much patronage jobs as uh, Mayor Connors. I mean, the Times, are, I, I think Alex Haley is the editor there, but the roots are in West Virginia. It's unbelievable. Cousins, family members, they can't even get the magistrate job because they're all related up there. <laughs> And I'm just wondering through this, like, what are they thinking about? It's like incestual. I think Tom Riggs sits in his office someday and says, Grant, Wilkes-Barre, all the incestual relationships. It's incredible because I think instead of knowing, I think all they think up here we're doing is instead of humming with them theme to deliverance, we know the word. Last, last year we were all here and uh, things change in a year. I, I see Matt in this here. They gave you his uh, first grandchild, and uh, congratulations on that. That's yeah. it. Personally, we had another child, so we have three boys in our family, and um, they're all under the age of five, but the good news is they're all on the city payroll. They're all firemen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that.
get that money until you don't get it. I think I give it back. Uh, but there's one person here that, uh, that isn't here this year, and uh, a closing note, and it's uh, Jim's mom, Lou. And um, she was a terrific woman, and everyone that, everyone that knew her, and I'm sure everyone here can relate to a Lou story. And uh, I know Jimmy misses her very much. And I'd just like to say that uh, the love and friendship you have shown to your friends and family is never ending. They were lessons that your mother taught you, and your whole family learned those lessons well. If wealth is measured in terms of love, loyalty, and friendship, your family, the Connors family, is the richest family on earth. Thank you, Jimmy. Will he be back? He's definitely going to be back next year. Definitely. That was excellent, Jack. Thank you. He, he was much better this year than last year. <laughs> You know, I'll be honest with you, when Joe O'Shea and Kevin and I were sitting down talking, we were wondering if we should invite you back, Jack. And I swear to you, you will be back next year. Next is a relative of Mayor Connors. And that's the only reason he got up here. No, I admit that. I admit that. But I want to introduce the Mayor's brother, Jack Connors. Some people laugh at certain things and certain people don't. That fall I just had, that, that was funny. But he said, well, just, just do some slapstick or something. And I said, well, they're not going to laugh at that. He said, sure they will. He said, if you do something like throwing water in your face. <laughs> that might be funny. He said, some of them might laugh. And I said, I don't think so. He said, how about if you hit yourself with an egg on the head? And I said, I don't, I don't think that would be funny. And then I thought, well, if they do laugh, it would be twice as funny. And then he said, no, I don't think so. That won't work. And then I said, well, what would happen if I borrowed this tie of yours? So would that be funny? And he said, no, I don't think so. I don't think that would be funny. So I said, how about, like, remember that old joke that they used to wear, like, they just sort of, like, pull, up, pull the shirt off the guy's shirt, like, pop all the buttons? Draw the face. And I said, I don't think so. He said, How about what the Stooges used to do where they pull clumps of hair out of your hair? And I said, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it'd be funny. And he said, Well, you know what always works? He said, When you drop your pants, and he said, you've got nothing on. Except, except your wife's uh, birthday gift for uh, being a good guy. And I said, I don't think that'll work. I don't think I'm going to be funny at all. And that's what I'm asking you, Jim. Was it worth it? Was it funny? But first of all, Mayor McGrady, now you see why I didn't hire my brother. <laughs> Funny, but you know what, what, what would be funny? 
funny, this would really be funny. I got the lieutenant governor. I'm in trouble. Well. Uh, I really don't know what to say to him. I didn't want to embarrass, like, because there's about 90% of the people there who did go there. <laughs> but eventually, I, if, if, I'll make it tomorrow, eventually. But I want to say one thing. Jack, you were good. You're paying for all of our suits to get cleaned. Bill Scranton saying to himself, what the hell did I come here for? Uh, oh, my God. We're not used to that stuff up at Yale. Uh, you got through Yale in four years. He got through East Strasburg in seven years. He's the mayor of Scranton and you're a nobody. Uh, all right, Dave. Uh, ready? I don't know if Dave Wenzel wants to get up after that. But the next speaker is going to be... Uh, a great friend of mine, Dave Wenzel, who uh, did serve four years as the mayor of Scranton. I know, Dave, nobody remembers that you were the mayor, but I, but I do remember. He was, so Dave Wenzel, give him a nice hand. Bring the guy up with the crutches, right? <laughs> You're looking for another crap ball, right? You might get it yet. Uh, let's see, I gotta, I gotta keep my uh, ad libs separate from my material here. <laughs> you know, oh, first of all, before I begin, uh, John Cawley asked me to uh, say that everybody here who's city employees, you know, you can put in for overtime for being at this Rose. <laughs> Just make sure that you uh, check off the little space in the bottom that says flood disaster there. Okay? And if you have any problems, just check with Judy Gatelli. She'll get everything all straightened out. <laughs> Mayor McGrory, you're here tonight. You know, you've already been in office already, but you've made one major mistake. You know, you don't get any of that good federal money if you almost have a flood down there. <laughs> I was talking with uh, Bill Scranton, we were just talking about the Republican primary, and I asked him about the different guys, and uh, I said, who's the one who really, uh, really did, you didn't want to vote for? And he says, well, you know, this guy Forbes, I don't like these rich guys who like to trade on the family name. <laughs> Tommy Monday, I want to thank you, Tommy, for putting me on this part of the program and everything, you know? Every time I see him on Jimmy, Jimmy McNulty's show, I've never seen so much ass kissing that goes on before. <laughs> it's one of these things, Tommy, you're a great lawyer. Oh, Tommy, you were a great mayor. Tommy, oh no, you were a very good lawyer. It's, it's, it's worse, except for maybe when Jimmy was on with President Clinton that day. <laughs> yeah. And Susie, you know, Susie was telling me a story before. Remember Susie when we were coming in? Yeah, she remembers it. <laughs> Go along with us, Susie. <laughs> we were talking about, she was mentioned that Zachary came home from school the other day, and he'd been reading about astronomy, and he said, he said, Susie, he said, I still haven't been able to figure out this thing about black holes in outer space. And she says, what's well, easy? And you just got to remember, it's just a collapsed sun, which all matter goes into it, and nothing ever comes out. And Zach thinks about it and said, oh, kind of like the police evidence room, doesn't it? <laughs> 
Uh, now that would have been a better joke if somebody hadn't already mentioned about it twice already before. But Jim, you know, the reason I'm here tonight though is that I stopped by at City Hall the other day. I know you weren't there. You never are there. <laughs> But uh, Marie gave me all the mail from all the people who was not going to be here tonight, and I just wanted to read you some of the things that they had to say, because they, they, some of them said some nice things. Governor Ridge sends his congratulations and wishes you, uh, uh, Susie, all the happiness and luck. And says uh, if there's anything they can do for you, if there's anything that your administration needs, don't hesitate to call Tom Comfort. <laughs> And Rick Santorum has uh, also said that uh, he's uh, about to send his apologies for not being here tonight. But he wants to unveil a new plan now. He wants to come up and talk to the AARP up here. And uh, this time he's come up with a real good one. In order to save Social Security, yeah, we're going to increase the retirement age to 90 at this point. <laughs> and finally, you got three letters. And I'm not going to go into them at all because really they all have the same theme to them. And it was from the Scranton Times Editorial Board, from Pete Noto, and from the Unabomber. So, <laughs> but you know what? I, I always feel very strange getting up here and, and knocking the mayor of the city of Scranton because it's such a dignified job and all. But then, when I think of Jimmy, I said, what the hell? <laughs> so Jimmy, again, congratulations to you and Susie and all of you. Thank you, Mayor Wenzel. Very good. Don't don't put that. In the, is somebody here from the Scranton Times? Don't put that in the paper about pre A, please. Wait, who, is there somebody from the Scranton Times? Who, oh, don't don't put that in there. Oh, is that you, Kristen? Oh yeah. Well. Get her. Yeah. <laughs> no, Kristen could be bought. See you after the show, Kristen. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Brian Reed. Where's Brian Reed? Brian Reed has the top ten, the top ten list of what to do in the next flood. Is that it, Brian? All right, here we go. Brian Reed. First of all, I'd like to say one thing. Hang out with Bo at the uh, O'Shea Brothers. Jack Conner, that was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. That was bizarre, without a doubt. And Councilman Barry, everybody stand up and stretch a little. Put your hands up. I don't want to fall asleep over now. I agree with Tommy. I don't know what the hell you were talking about. Anyway, uh, my name is Brian Reed. I'm a friend of uh, Jim Connors and the Connors family. I am Republican, and one of about six in this entire room. The only reason I'm here is Al Fazio gave me his ticket. <laughs> anyway, I want to talk about the flood. I mean, how can we do a program like this without talking about the flood and the, and the victims uh, that were involved in the flood? Now people are saying, Brian Reed, you're not from the flood, you're from uh, Southside East Mountain. Well, that's not true. Uh, actually, my, my mother's homestead is in the floodplain and has been there for uh, a long time. And uh, we have gone through uh, not one flood, but two floods over the last 10 years. So down there trying to bail out my parents and bail out relatives and, and friends in the neighborhood, uh, certainly, you know, I've walked through those streets and had a lot of personal observations as to what was being done and of course, what wasn't being done. And uh, I came up with something like a spin-off of uh, David Letterman on the top 10 things to do prior to the next flood. And hopefully we'll never see another flood again uh, in our lifetime. So I'm gonna start off with number 10. Number 10 is to instruct Greg Herbster to secure rowboats, canoes, paddle boats, etc., so the city can offer sightseers an up-close tour of the flood victims. <laughs> number nine. Notify city engineer Ron Belisky in advance that a flood is coming so that he can schedule a vacation to some island not shown on a map anywhere. <laughs> Number eight, re 
reroute all incoming calls to the Scranton Sewer Authority over to Rotor Rooter. <laughs> Arrange for an intimate dinner with Barbara Marinucci at the popular Dante's Den. <laughs> Contact Jerry Adams and inquire if he knows of anyone locally that can blow up the Albright Avenue Bridge before the flood rises. <laughs> Number five, have Rocky Damiano gather all the junk, and that's just about everything that you have over there in those barns. Position it next to the riverbank so we can file a claim with the federal government. <laughs> Number four, contact State Representative Fred Bellardi inform him that a disaster is about to occur, not in his district, but come over anyway and meet the media. <laughs> Number three, have the local commander of the National Guard instruct his soldiers to walk through the flood area as opposed to riding and waving to all the flood victims. <laughs> Number two, contact the governor, advise him of the flood status, but never and I mean never mention Ernie's name. <laughs> and number one, contact Congressman Joe McDade, remind him that the Western Field plot section still exists in the city of Scranton, that the Lackawanna River is still running uncontrollable, and that nothing has really changed since his last visit of 10 years ago. <laughs> anyway, on a more serious note, I'd like to say one thing. Uh, there's always a lot of critics when that type of disaster occurs. <coughs> Uh, obviously, there's an awful lot of, uh, you know, people that are stressed out, people that really are uh, at a point that they don't know what their life is going to bring tomorrow. But I will say one thing, that uh, it's true of both mayors that are here, Mayor McNulty, Mayor Connors, that uh, one thing I do know is that uh, I certainly think that you extended yourself as much as could be extended under those circumstances. And that I know one thing, the REAPs on Cottage Avenue certainly appreciate both gentlemen, both mayors, of what you did for the people. And uh, let's hope we never see another flood in this lifetime. Thanks, Brian. I, I told you nobody remembers Wenzel. He didn't even mention Wenzel's name. Did you hear him say? McDulty, Connor, Steve. We remember you, don't worry. He was the mayor of Scranton. <laughs> Brian Reed, why didn't you mention his name? There was no flood at that time. Oh, uh, there was no flood, well. Yeah, it never floods in Wenzel's administration. Uh, next is Mayor McGroarty. <laughs> I don't know how, why is he in Scranton? Think about that. Why is the mayor of Wilkes-Barre here? We don't care what he does. We don't care if he's re-elected. We, re we don't care how his administration or his council acts. Like, like he, he, his only claim to fame was that he was on the McNulty show once. And then, and then he had his picture taken with Clinton. Big deal. No, think about that. I mean, and then Connors wants him. I don't understand it. Joe O'Shea works for Santorum. He'd be better. At least he lives here. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's nothing doing works very on a Saturday night. You're right. Like, uh, Mike Washo is somewhere in the audience. He got more publicity than McGroarty. Get him up here. No, Mike, where are you? Are you here? Oh, yeah, there he is. Now, stay where you are, Mike. You know what's funny with poor Mike? When he, was, when he was in the city of Scranton, like he was always in the front, he quits, he quits the administration. No, look where he's sitting. The poor guy. I feel bad. Look at Mike. You're all over. Nobody even cares. You're, Mike, nobody cares if you're here. All right. The mayor, the mayor of the city of Wilkes-Barre, he's on a level with McDonough and, and Medella. I um, mean, <laughs> no, that was a low blow. I don't like that. Joe Medell, I swear to God, I, I had breakfast at, in, at McDonald's and Cardinal this morning. I did. But so, uh, <laughs> Mayor McCrory. Mayor McCrory. Tony and beautiful downtown Wilkesboro, Tony. <laughs>
<laughs> Attorney Munley, he's done a great job. You know, I, I really, here's, he's a typical lawyer. How do you know when a lawyer is lying? His lips are moving, so he's done a great <laughs> job. <laughs> Jimmy, I want to thank you first for throwing this party for me. It's great. I really appreciate it. Beautiful party. <laughs> appreciate you throwing it for me. I think <laughs> You love whispering. Okay? And I just wanted to say, you know, I hope everybody's happy here. We figured since Jimmy and I are together, the vendors will be here, we've raised the price this year. So we jacked up the hundred and a quarter. <laughs> um, and I just thought I'd like to start off. I don't know if any of you know, I took over in January and my predecessor, Mayor Name, and I, probably not one of the very close, we didn't get along very well. And after I left, uh, he left, he took, uh, I took over. He got a voodoo doll, and every chance he can give me a, a jab, he could. And uh, Mary Namey, he, he's of Syrian descent, uh, much like my wife. And uh, Mary Namey for hey, well, I'll start this guy off right. He's going to have a Syrian snow dance, and we had a blizzard. So that's how we started off. <laughs> then we had a flood, and uh, it's been the best thing for me because I got a lot of publicity out of it. And uh, things worked out well. The river came up very close to the top. Didn't go over. Everybody's happy. I look like a great guy. <laughs> Nothing to do with it, but this <laughs> In all fairness, you, know, you may not know, but we can have some flooding books for you. We have about 460 homes. Go ahead, buddy. I'm talking. Well, you're done. <laughs> you're done. Are you done? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, do I have the floor? Thanks. Just to make sure. Like I was saying, before I was interrupted, we have about 460 homes. We were flooded at Wilkesbury, and uh, you know, it, uh, it, it, it really shows the, the goodness in, uh, in people, because people come together in times of adversity and work together. And, and I want to tell you, before I give this guy a hard time, I want to tell you something about him, is that, you know, uh, when I ran for office, uh, I was fortunate that uh, in, La uh, I ran in 95, so in uh, 94 went out, we raised almost $100,000. And that kind of keeps guys out of the race. So it was very nice for me. Uh, we got ready to run. We were organized. And uh, unfortunately, no one decided to run against me. So it was beautiful. I got both nominations. And so I came up to Scran. And my, my wife is a, a fan of Jimmy Connors for what reason? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> and she says, you know that Jimmy Connors does a great job in Scran. I said, Joanne, they're broke. Everything's in trouble. <laughs> she, he, he said, he's always on the TV. Go up and see what he does up there, because you got to copy what he's doing. So we go to Scranton, and I, I come to see him. I said, you know, Mary, my wife, you know, she thinks you're doing a great job here. For what reason, I don't know. And she said, uh, copy whatever he does. And I said, you know, Jim, if you were me, what would you do? What would you, you know, election? He said, you know what? You look at you, it's written all over it. You love Wilkes-Barre. You love it. Just tell people you love it. So I left there, and, I, and everything I do now, I had all things printed, signs, I had a uh, jar overs, everything. I love wook spray. And I, I had, am I right? We had jar overs? I think as soon as we have one on the refrigerator, don't we? we def and uh, it took off, and nobody ran against me, and I was fortunate to get the job. So you can see that the, you know, it doesn't take a lot to be the mayor of wook spray. I got on a post. <laughs> but I just want to tell you some things that before, because you know, we have some very, very high profile people at the table here. And I, I, you know, I was on the McNulty show. You know, it really made me look good. You know what? After the show, my mother called. She wanted to make sure I wasn't anorexic after being on the gym. <laughs> hey, hey, where is Mr. O'Shea? Where is he at? Stand up. I don't know where he is. Stand up, I see it. I want to tell you. Jim told... Go ahead, clap. You did a good job. Is he the chairman? I'm going to tell you, things are in good shape here. Jim McNulty said, don't worry about the bill tonight. He'll take care of it. <laughs> There's my friend Judy Gatella. Hey! Everybody knows Judy. She learned, learned to whisper in a sawmill, didn't she? <laughs> Judy, how are you? I love you. I love Scranton, if you didn't know that. I want to tell you, we do, you know, I'm jumping around. I'm going to forget some of the stuff I've written here, but you know what? We get, now that we're on Judy Gatella, let's thank her. Judy, thanks for holding out the inspections tomorrow morning to shut the place down. We appreciate it. <laughs> You notice that Mayor Wenzel, quiet got here. Who does he take a poke at but me? Did you notice he took a poke at me before I came up? I don't know. Does anybody remember? Because I do. How about that attorney? What was his name? They had working for him. Oh, I can't think of his name now. Uh, attorney Dave Miller. Remember Dave Miller? He appointed him. He's the guy he appointed, and he forgot to go to the hearing. Cost the city of Scranton a couple million dollars. Good job, Mayor. Good job. The state of Pennsylvania, they always tell you, case on, you know, screwing government up, Mayor Wenzel, there it is, you got it. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, somebody get Joe Vadilla 
a drink back there. Get him a drink. He needs a drink. Everybody know the mayor of Harvey, like, get himself in the jam a couple months back. Get him a drink. <laughs> Chief uh, Osborne is here. Is he still here? Deputy Chief of Fire. Osborne, is he still here? Was he here? Osborne? There's Terry. How are you? Terry, you guys have done a great job. You guys haven't lost the foundation all this year. Congratulations. I want to thank you for that. But I want to tell you, I'm very interested. You guys may not know, but I'm into public safety. And uh, I have to tell you, I make a lot of trips to Scranton. And uh, basically, uh, how Jim and I got to know ourselves, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit. But basically, uh, my predecessor and I, we didn't get along very well, and I, I was interested in some fire things, and I said, look, let's go up to Scranton. They've bought, done some things right. They bought a rescue engine, a quint, and things like that. I'm interested, and they came up here, and I just want to tell you, uh, you have a great man, uh, Terry Osborne, and I'm not bust him. I think he does a great job, and I just want to publicly thank Terry. Thank you, Terry. I, I'm trying to improve some things, and he, uh, he's helped me out with some things, and so there are some good guys in Scranton. Okay, Jeff, he's, he's one of them. Okay, uh, how about uh, Marie and Andrea? Now those two girls, they're great. I'll tell you, I, I like to take them to Wilkesbury. Where is Marie and Andrea? There's my friends. They're always very nice to me when they come to Scranton or I call Scranton. Jim, I think they like me better than you. <laughs> All right, and how about Gene Barrett? He had a lot of things to say, didn't he? He's a bowling ball, you know? I told the president, you know what a bowling ball is? I'm trying to go real fast, and a bowling ball is a guy hooked to your leg, just slows you down, you know? Clint says to me, his problem, he had a lot of gutter balls. But look at Gene Barrett. There's how many counts in the screen? Does everybody know how many there are? There's five. Poor Gene Barrett can't even count to get three votes to be the chairman anymore. He lost the job. <laughs> All right, I'm wrapping it up. Sorry. I can tell they're getting it worse, you know, but the reason I can, you know, I'm probably not going to be running the screen for a while, Jim, so. <laughs> Anything wrong, Your Honor? Yeah. I'm wrapping this up. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, if it was billable hours, it'd be a different deal with this guy. You know what? And uh, my friend George Murphy's not here, and, I, and I, I guess I should scrap that evidence room. But you know, that that is a great thing. You guys, that that you know. And you have to know from somebody outside of Lackawanna County, you know, because that's the thing that you know you get in the paper down around every time you have an evidence room. And uh, WBRE's our downtown, as Tony knows. And uh, Chief Murphy was down there one day, and he said, and I saw Chief Murphy, and he said, Mayor, I want to congratulate you on your election. And I said, Oh, hey, this is pretty cool. You know, you always see Chief Murphy. The only guy with more gold is uh, with a uh, Clee, Jimmy Clee, right? He has more gold than him. <laughs> wow. How about that guy? If he was in that flood, he would have went down. <laughs> If you look at him from the back, you don't know if it's a guy or a girl. You know? <laughs> but he's a nice guy, you know what I mean? He's, a, he's not here. That's great. Let's give another shot. <laughs> I like Jimmy Clay. He's my friend. You know what I mean? If I don't talk about you, I don't like you. Tony, how you doing? The cake's running? Good. But, you know, getting back to George Murphy, great chief that he was, he said, Mayor, he said, our honored screen, when we know somebody, we meet them, the first thing we want to do is give them a key to the evidence room. Here's your own personal key. And I'd like to return this to you. But, uh, and look, I don't know if you know, I had the Democratic Republican nomination. I was very fortunate. And uh, so, you know, I go either way, the wind's going, you know. Uh, Senator Wallace, are you here still? You know, everybody knows Senator Wallace? He's in the inspector's office, but he thinks he's the senator over there, Senator Wallace. <laughs> But uh, I had the fortunate, uh... Andy, everything okay over there? Hey, how about Santorum voting against Flood Aid? Is he a bowling ball or what? I <laughs> play that guy voting against Flood Aid, Jimmy. I really let me down. But beyond him, I was at the White House on Tuesday again. This is not a joke. This is true. I got to go back on Tuesday, and I don't know. Maybe they've taken a liking to me. That's all right. I like that. And so I go down there, and I said, uh, and this is, I said to Clinton, I said, Bill, you know, what do you think of the chance of the re-election? You know what he said, with all these Republicans fighting so much, you know, things look so great. He said, I'm seriously thinking about going back, going back into dating. So he's going to start dating again, no plan. <laughs> he must think he has the job locked up, I guess. And how about the Republicans? Are they great? Or how, what are you, Republicans? What is this? What kind of crowd is this? A little bit of both? Good, we're good. How 
about the Republicans? They can't even count. Look at them. They got three of a kind, they can't beat a pair. They got Gingrich, Dole, Buchanan, they can't beat Gore and Clinton. Three of a kind can't beat a pair in the Republican Party, they're so bald up. Okay, scratch that one, then go. <laughs> Those who do nothing, do nothing wrong, and make a lot of mistakes. I hired my brother, that's the only one. <laughs> Oh, I hired your brother tomorrow. <laughs> your Honor, how are you? Just to tell you about lawyers, you know, look at Gingrich, Dole, and Buchanan. You know, remind you of that, that Republican law firm. Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. Okay? <laughs> you know what? I'm wrapping this up. I got two more things, but I want to tell you something. Uh, Jimmy, a little advice to you to keep you out. Do you have some bad paper problems up here right here? <laughs> Newspaper problems that they wrap you up once in a while? Don't have a newspaper screen. I'm gonna tell you about the screen. That's good. But I wanted to tell you the newspaper. Here's what I did. I have a lot of problems, you know. And uh, someone alluded to that I had a siren in my car. Now, you know whose bright idea it was to put flashing lights in the siren in my car? Your Who do you think gave me that stupid idea? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't need to tell you any further. I don't want to mention the guy's name. But uh, I got myself in a little bit of jam. But you know what? It put me on the front page of the paper. It doesn't matter what they say about you as long as your name is out there. Because people just read the headline. <laughs> But how about the screen cops, you know? You're thinking that these guys, every chance they get to ball them up, they go right to it, you know? And so what I, I wanted to prevent that, so that's why I put a new firing range in the basement of the police station. And our station is beautiful, it's brand new. I invited Chief got a Murphy to get out and look at it, because I see you guys for practice. You guys just get bombed and shoot off the back porch of a house, don't they? <laughs> You know what? Boy, I'll tell you, Mike, you should see how this guy writes. Is this a mess or what? Look at this. We're paying him by the hour. How much are you charging out? Too much. Too much. Too much. Well, let me just tell you, you know, St. Patrick's Day just passed, and, you know, Mayor Connors and a few other people down at this local pub, Mayor Connors says to the one guy, you know you have an Irish brogue. Might you be from Ireland? And the guy said, yes, I am. Isn't that great? Mayor Connors says, give us both two shots. You got a problem over there in the band, don't you? Where are you from? Pocono. At the Pocono. I'm in charge here. Hey, oh, Shane, no check to this guy, right? Now, before I was interrupted again, so he said, Where in Ireland might you be, for, might you be from? So he got me all balled up. And the guy says, County Cork. County Cork? I'm from County Cork. Bartender, give us two more shots. And the guy says, thank you. And Jimmy slugs it down and he says, where in County Cork might you be from? And the guy says, I'm from the city of Dublin. Dublin, I'm there from there myself, Jimmy Connors. Give us two more shots. They both swing down the shots. Jimmy says to him, what street did you live on? In County Cork, city of Dublin. He's, ah, we lived on McPherson Street. McPherson Street, I lived there myself. Oh my gosh, Jimmy Connors says, give us both two more shots. They both take the shots down, and the bartender says, after that, those two shots, you guys are through. You're out of here. The bartender throws them out, and the guy, other guy at the bar says, why did you throw those two nice guys out of the bar? Can you believe those Connors brothers drunk again don't know each other? <laughs> Nicely. Again, I want to tell you, I really like Jimmy Connors, you know? He's a, he makes me look good, you know, because I can't keep up, but it's nice. But I want to say something nice, and I want to tell you something. There are optimistic and pessimistic people in this world, wherever you go. A pessimistic person sees only the dark sides of the clouds, and he mopes. A philosopher sees both sides, and he shrugs, shrugs, excuse me. Jimmy Connors is a true optimist. He doesn't see the clouds at all. He's walking on them every day. <laughs> I, I, I want to tell you, I consider Jimmy Connors to be my dear friend and also 
a good ambassador of Northeastern Pennsylvania. And if all our communities in Northeastern Pennsylvania can work together, look at the, uh, the wealth of, of working together, we can bring industry and people employed her. We can't have this cloaking from town to town. We need to start bringing communities together and work together. And I credit him for that, and for that I consider him a good friend. His wife Susie, I, I think a lot of her. I call her a lot, probably drive them nuts. I had the pleasure tonight of meeting Mr. Connors, a nice gentleman. I really enjoyed that. I only regret that I have, wasn't able to meet your mother, who everybody says so many things, nice things about I wish I had. But it's a distinct honor for me on behalf of the residents of the city and the city council, which I get along with. I hear you have some problems. <laughs> I don't know why you would think that. <laughs> And what I have here is this is the, this is the C, key to the city of Wilkes-Barre, and unlike Scranton, it is paid for. <laughs> the city of Wilkes-Barre honors James Conner with this key to the city, March 23, 1996, Thomas D. McRory, Mayor. And if you know me, my slogan is I love Wilkes-Barre, and I went very far and I put on here, I love Scranton. Thank you, Jim. Tom McGuire, thank you. You know, I, I came, I said to Joel O'Shea and Jimmy Fry, I said, look, I'm only going to request one thing tonight. Tell the waitresses when they serve McGrory, give them the decaf. <laughs> no, they didn't, did they? Thank you, Mayor McGrory. And I love Wilkes-Barre, and I do love Tom McGrory, and I met his wife and his mom and dad and his whole family, and they're delightful, and I'm trading my brother for his tomorrow. <laughs>